me as well. So they will be keeping me right. Um, so they will contribute, but please feel free. We've got our, we've got our chat manager, Tony, official title, chat manager, Vance and chat manager. Um, so feel free to put some thoughts, comments, etc., in in the chat. I'm not going to be monitoring that because I put far too much busyness to be rambling about. Um, okay, I'm going to have the last bit of my Milky Way. And that means we're going to start learning. All right. Mm. On that, ground rules. So in a normal workshop, um, IRL in real life, we we'll normally go over how we want to work together, how we want to make the space as creative as possible. It's a bit weird online, eh? but I would say if you are wanting to eat a Milky Way, feel free to eat Milky Way. If you're having your lunch, go ahead, have a drink, go to the toilet. There's there's nothing, there's nothing that's, that's you can take your shoes off. I hope you aren't wearing shoes. That is, so whatever you can do, take a little break. Um, we're not expecting anything to be triggering at all in this session. It's not, we're going to be talking about mental health, but we're not looking for any really disclosures or any personal sharing of information. It's more general about tackling the stigma around mental health and talking about it. So please keep yourself safe, keep everyone else safe in the room. Um, and myself and Tony are on hand um, to make sure we're all okay. If there's anything that comes up that you find difficult or upsetting, then Tony is on the chat that you can privately message her. Um, there's a little tab that you can do that. Um, give Tony a wee private message. Um, and also, if there's any points that people do find difficult, we can share and send posts onto Urgent Help. So there we go. That's us. I can put some ticks next to things we've gone through. Um, so let's do some introductions. Who are we? So I mentioned I'm Lynn, I am the CME. I work in the social movement team with Tony, who's given you a little wave. And we've got two of our wonderful volunteers helping me co-facilitate today. We've got Susan and Bridget, give us a wave. Thank you. And we've also see Gemma, she's one of our volunteers as well. She's gonna be helping out in future workshops. And everyone else, you all look familiar. I'm sure we've met before in life. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so, da, 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 da. yeah, we just stress as well. We're on an online space. Normally, we'd be doing. Oh yeah, Wendy. Wendy's here. Where's Wendy? I'm finding it hard because there's so many screens. You're all. You're all. You're all great. Um, for confidentiality, normally we're like this will stay in with these four walls. Well, we're in little boxes in our own four walls and also because we're recording it. I can't guarantee any confidentiality. So please just keep yourself safe. Um, we aren't planning and going away. Please don't take and just respect each other. Be nice to each other. And that that's that's general rules in life. So Tony, shall we start with PowerPoint? Q slides. This is my woo. Oh, there's my little thing. So there we are. That's us. And if you can pop to the next one for me. I've said I'm from See Me. Hopefully, because you signed up for this event, you might know who See Me are. Um, but if you don't, um, we are the National Program to End Mental Health Stigma and Discrimination. Um, we think it's a big deal. We don't, we aren't a direct service provider, but we work around with volunteers at the heart, lived experiences at the heart of everything that we do to make sure the stigma around mental health is challenged and any discrimination as well related to that that we tackle and we're proactive around that. Um, and so if you can put me on the next slide, we've got some key messages which will wrap up, wraps up what I'd ask you to take on board today and have a real think about going forward is that everyone has mental health, that you don't have to be an expert to talk about it, and that we need to change that culture. Now, for that, that's why you're all here. Um, we're part of something um, called the social movement. We're in the social movement team, so what's a social movement? We feel that change can happen one conversation at a time. Now, if it was just me and Tony trying to change, change a culture, we wouldn't really get very far as good as we are. If it was just me, Tony, Susan and Bridget, we'd get a bit more. But if we get all of you part of our social movement for change, we can have a bigger, bigger impact on society and then ultimately end mental health stigma and discrimination. So that is our vision. 
And today we are going to invite you all and give you some actions and resources to get involved in that movement for change. So what I'd really like to do is now, if you pop me on the next slide, Tony, and we're going to do an outline of what the workshop is. And why I tell you what we're going to be getting up to today, and you can decide if that's if that's where you're meant to be. Um, seems like a good use of your next hour and 15 minutes. Um, would you be able to pop in the chat for me? What brought you along today? Why are you here? So if you type in, um, oh, Tony, too, too keen. There we go, thank you. Pop in the chat, why are you here What Are you interested? Do you work with people? Do you care about this? Let me know, why are you here? And then I may if, um, draw on some um, experience that we have um, if you do that. So please pop down, what, what brought you here today? So what we're gonna cover is we're gonna understand what we do, we've done that, understand our social movement for change, we've chatted about that, and we invite you all to get involved, and get involved in that. What is mental health stigma and discrimination? Why it's important? Get those skills and resources and don't worry um, afterwards. Um, we're going to be emailing you out those resources to get involved in and the links that we refer to and you'll get the PowerPoint with these super pretty slides. Um, so if there's anything, don't worry, you'll, you'll be getting that follow up. And we're going to give you some calls to action. We're going to actually make you do stuff after this. Oh my days, I know. So cheeky. So. We've got a few people coming in about seeing why they're here. And um, Tony, if you mind just popping the slides down for me, that'd be great. I'm back, hello. So yeah, having experiences and people want to, oh yeah, people taking action when, that's not interesting. So one of the reasons a lot of our volunteers get involved and a lot of people get involved and want to change things, is just that we don't want, we want to just help other people. It's not for ourselves, it's definitely to help the experiences of others. Um, oh, people saying events are good. Oh, making me blush. Um, great. Oh, amazing. So people are working with people, or they're thinking about yeah. If you're working with people, and also you care about this stuff. That's awesome. Um, so I don't have to try and make you care, but I'm so glad you're here. And even if you don't, you didn't care by the end of this workshop, you're definitely going to want to take action. So this is a bit where we find out who actually read their email. Who has a pen and paper ready? Well done. Who is doing the walk of shame, the shuffle of shame to get some pen and paper? Uh, right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start. Not me the... this week, Tony. I've minded my paper. <laughs> Susan, you're co-facilitating. <laughs> You have great stationery as well, which probably is the best paper. Um, so right, on, it's been COVID and we're all been talking a bit more about mental health. I'm not gonna say, see me did that before COVID, but we kind of did, we've been doing that since 2002. Glad society's kind of catching up. So I want to know, since lockdown started or COVID or the last few months, what's one thing you've been doing to look after your mental health? If you pop that down, write it down for me. How do you take care of that big, beautiful brain of yours? Pop that down, and when you've written it down, show it to me. Oh, or yeah, pop it in the chat or show it on screen. That would be amazing. Oh, journaling, exercise. Oh, Jen, what kind of exercise? Journaling. Also, oh, Susan, what was that face meant to be? Was that a smiley face? <laughs> I've been following a workout app to be able to do exercise just to keep me on track each day. Mmm, nice one. It's a wee smiley face, but I slipped off my chair went down a bit. <laughs> it's a wiggly one. Oh, there's some, Melissa's got some beautiful sunflowers. Tell me about them, Melissa. Oh, you're on mute, unmute yourself. Right, there we go. I, I go to a wee art class and I've been continuing to do workshops, online workshops throughout this, and it's the only thing that's actually saved my mental health with the pressures yes. of my work. Yep. Oh, lovely. That's gorgeous. Um, I've started doing, um, everyone will know this now, well, um, the life drawing online, I do an online life drawing and doing creative through that, you're getting a wee bit more expressive as I go along. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's interesting because the thing I do, they're, they're going to stay online after this because it's so handy, isn't it? Yeah. People are yeah. some new skills. So I'm just going to, thanks so much for sharing that. Now I'm going to scroll through some of this. Um, 
oh yoga oh, I'm useless at yoga I do barely you useless walking the dog we've got some a couple of guest dogs Bridget's got dogs here um a walk by the sea you lucky person oh cuddling rabbits that's beautiful like watching journaling granddaughter I know I had a niece that was born in lockdown I've not managed to meet yet well like, I've seen her from two meters away now um but I've not been able to hold her great so lots of people lots of people doing connecting up with people taking care of themselves that's amazing so I guess right now people are recognizing the really importance the importance of looking after themselves but for that we for us that's that's out that's before COVID happened and that's after so I'm so glad and probably I'm preaching to people who were quite aware of this to begin with but I know for me personally I've changed the way I take care of myself and I had to think about what that looked like I'm just gonna move my desk oh sorry if I'm making you seasick um but mental health is something which is fluctuating it's changing and you're all you're all doing things that are proactive you all clearly have tips of how people can take care of themselves so thank you so much for sharing that um and you might have picked up some tips from other people I didn't think it was myself I was like oh probably should do some more journaling um yeah so thank you for sharing that so but I think it's really important to get across though that last year we did a survey and one of the things that people most experience stigma from was from their friends and family when they tried to discuss that with them the those closest to them in work as well so we know how to take care of our mental health but we want to create a movement where everyone around us creates that supportive environment so they know why we're taking care of ourselves as well and when we need to talk about mental health they understand why we're doing that so everyone can open up that conversation and one of the whys why are you here well i'm glad i'm so glad that you said um you care and you're passionate or you work with people with mental health but over half of people with uh, mental health problems surveyed this year said they've experienced some form of stigma and discrimination over half it's not something that just we've got a few voices that's over half so that's one of one of the big reasons that we still believe that there's a case to be made that we still haven't solved the stigma and discrimination issue and for that i'm going to invite susan um, one of our volunteers she um, is going to share with us a bit of a bit of the reasons why and her experience of stigma and discrimination so over to you Susan. thank you uh so i'm susan Faulkner, i'm from gallus heels you might have heard me before um so i'm sorry if i repeat some of the stuff but anyways here we go so i'm worthless i'm useless i'm a burden i let people down and i look a mess and i'll never make anything of myself that's what i was made to feel with and told about when stigma affected me greatly when i was told i wasn't a team player i was letting the team down i was a burden when i was off ill because it was affecting things through work a lot of mine came from work related stress and that's how stigma made me feel that i wasn't worthy of anything it wasn't easy and a few years ago it did take me a long time and i decided to speak out about four years ago more so about the stigma because and i asked for help i told my friends the truth i told family the truth that how bad i was feeling and that people that used to pass me in the street would say are you on holiday again and i go yeah i'm on holiday again i would never say no actually I'm off with mental health so now i do if i'm ever off and i'm honest about it but by heck my family and friends stepped up big style to help me with my mental health and that's why I speak out about my mental health and my stigma that I've suffered. I don't want anybody else to suffer. We'll all have heard it. Get a grip. I don't know what I'm meant to be getting a grip of. I still haven't found that to this day. Um, I've looked at Amazon and everything. It's not there. Um, I have been told I don't look like I should have mental health problems. Again, I'm not sure what I'm meant to look like. This is me. Sometimes you're lucky that now during lockdown I've got makeup on, but couldn't be bothered the day slept in um but it shouldn't matter what you look like it's you so that's why i speak out now because i don't want people to suffer how i suffered the get a grip one's the worst one for me i hate that if somebody tells me to get a grip well i've been caught to saying it to myself so i do speak out now about it because it's horrible when people make you belittle you 
into feeling that you're not worthwhile and that's how I felt. Sometimes occasionally still do, but it's more my own self-esteem that. So what I'm asking what I ask now is for people to just ask and listen. Um you know, you see somebody maybe struggling. It's not that they're no getting dressed every day or something like that. It could be that all of a sudden they've stopped going to an event. Maybe it was a hobby that they had and all of a sudden they've stopped going for it. A lot of the, my friends that know me very well and someone here, I am a great lover of rugby. And I think if I stopped going to watch my local rugby team, something would be said, are you okay? So that's good. I've got people looking out for me. But I don't want to hear these statements anymore. You don't look like you've got mental health. You've got to get a grip. What have you got to be depressed about? How do they know? It's always the old adage, you can have a swan on the top, but you're paddling like hell underneath. So these statements, and this is why I speak out as well, is because we've got to get rid of them in society and treat people's mental health and physical health the same. We need to look out for each other. We don't all have the answer. Um, I'm a great believer in mental health first aiders helping in the workplace. And people panic about that, thinking you've got to be a psychologist or something. You don't. As a physical first aider, you're not going to take somebody's appendix out. You're there to help them, comfort them, listen to them, and move forward with them. And just sort of pretend this little bit, it's during the pandemic as well. Yes, of all, it's socially isolated. Um, distance isolate but you don't need to socially isolate you can shout hello to somebody across a park or when you're passing smile or say to that person in the shop that's doing frontline work for you thank you a thank you goes a long way so that's kind of just now we're going to talk about more um but that's how stigma made me feel it made me feel like a piece of shit <laughs> but We'll get there and the more we all open up about it, I know it's not easy to do, but the more we all say, no, this isn't good enough, things will start to change. So speak to you again in a wee while. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, for me, that resonates as then, um, I'm sure we've all turned up and we've mentioned that we have these hobbies and some of them might be online right now. Like Susan says, how often you're like, oh yeah, yeah I've been off you know, work, I've had the cold or I've had that. Have you ever heard someone say, oh yeah, depression, yeah, I've been off, I've not been able to get out of bed this week. Um, and until that's part of our normal language, part of what we discuss, um, there's still stigma and discrimination out there. And I think Susan captures so, so well, um, and that's why we, our volunteers are so, so useful, like, they, they make so much change by using their personal experience, you can really, feel like that ha it's, it brings it right back down and we know that when mental health oh hey bridget dogs um and we know that when with mental health it can the stigma and discrimination can be worse than the actual mental health diagnosis if you are diagnosed the stigma around that and when people see that diagnosis instead of the person and the full personality behind that we're so much more than that aren't we we can be funny we can be creative we can be anxious we can also be whatever, we can be painters, um, journalers. And because of that barrier, and, and Susan there talked about how she felt about herself, we stop ourselves from getting help. Again, you, you might, you all probably unfortunately know someone who said, oh, it's just a low mood, I'm not gonna get help for it, it's not that serious, I don't wanna use up time. And we'd never say that about other health issues, would we? Um, and the isolation that comes with that, I can't tell anyone, and who can I tell? And if I did, they, they, they wouldn't understand. And Tony, if you don't mind sharing the slide, here is um, and here's an example of how the impact of experience of mental health problems can hamper um, life experiences. Um, so we've got a really yeah, a saddening list, but the reality, people dying younger, excluded from decision making, risk of suicide, Workplace difficulties, I'm sure you've all heard of that, and if you've done mental health first aid, you know people in it, there's the case study of someone who says, I'd rather say I was in, in prison than I was actually in a mental health hospital. Um, yeah, if you don't want to speak about, if you go to the doctors and your mental health isn't taken seriously, um, and sometimes it isn't, and we are working, we have a health and social care programme, if there is stigma and discrimination there, it can really impact, it can, it can, if you're already feeling worthless, it can 
can contribute to that. And yeah, while asking for help again. So thank you, Tony, you can close my little slide. And there is some, some sombre stuff for you, but hopefully it shows why we came. There's some, society's not got quite it sorted, eh? But our call to action is that if we all take a little change, make a little step, we're gonna, we're gonna help the next person not feel like that. And that's really important. Now, we're talking about lockdown and how we've been keeping busy. Who's been doing quizzes? Who has done a quiz? Who's hosted a quiz? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm the one forcing, I'm the youngest out of my siblings, forcing my family on a Saturday night to, to pay attention to me as I hold a TV remote. <laughs> and, I, and I wear a bow tie and I'm like, welcome, I play the, the blind date theme tune. Um, so we're not gonna do that right now. It's not, it's not five o'clock yet, but we're gonna do a little quiz. No, draw on that. I hope you've not used all your paper and pen. And we are going to do a little quiz. Now, where are the quiz questions? Oh, they're on the slides. I think I'm over prepared for them. So we've got a few quiz questions. Um, and we're gonna do them uh, one by one so we can see. So let's see, we're gonna get you to put down the answers, A, B or C, and we'll see how we go. So Tony, you're gonna to have to get click happy here, and open and shut quite a bit if that's all right. Um, so quiz, question number one, how many people have mental health? Is it one in four, one in three, or one in one? A, B or C, write it down now and give me a little show when, you're, when you've done it. C, we've got some C's. Actually, Tony, you don't need to shut it. I can just do a little conveyor belt of people at the bottom to see who's, what's the majority seeing. Hold up, oh, we've got a C. We've got a C. We've got, oh, seems to have a, a lot of everybody. Spot on, you've been listening. I let it slip earlier on. One in one, we all have mental health. Um, and sometimes people don't realize that, that there's all things that we need to do to take care of it doesn't have to be a mental illness. We've all things to do that we take care and we talk about that continuum. Now I mentioned earlier on that the people have experienced mental health stigma and discrimination. But what percent of people with mental health problems have experienced that? Is it 30%, 60% or 90%? 30, 60 or 90? Pop up your little, your little doodads on, on the screen for me. And I'm, gonna, I'm gonna slide along. We've got 60, we've got B, we've got, oh, we've got another B, we've got, oh, quite a lot of B's coming up. Oh, we've got a C, we've got a B. Um, everyone that went with 90% points for you, not points for society for being so awful, but yeah, 90% of people. I let it slip, it was over half, so you're either between 60 or 90, but yeah, 90%. So we've got a big job. So when I say we all need to start taking action today, I mean it, okay? Um, moving on to the next questions. Tony, sure. So well done and how you're doing so far, even if you've got no points so far, you, you'll learn, like, you can learn stuff. The next question, if we have a slide, there we go, it's coming. Da, da, da. What percentage of Scots have witnessed people being treated unfairly because of their mental health? 48, 56, or 69? Give me a wee vote. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? 48, 56, or 69? A, B, or C? Show me your answers. We've got 56. We've got B. We've got. Oh, oh, everyone's, everyone's getting a wee bit messy now. Now I can just see lots of different letters coming up. I'm just getting alphabets from people. Um, amazing. Okay, it is 69%. So if you got C, give yourself a point. Yeah, we're going with the highest one again. You should have learned from the last one. Yeah, 69% witness people being treated unfairly. People aren't even doing it in secret, yeah? People, we are, stigma discrimination is out there. Think about the things that you've seen or heard things been happening. Which leads on to our next question. Which of the following contributes to stigma? 
dressing up as a patient from a lunatic asylum at Halloween. Seeing someone who likes to keep their home very tidy is a bit OCD. Or a headline in a newspaper calling someone who has committed a crime a psycho. Which one of the following contributes to stigma? A, B, or C? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Oh, God, how, how are we voting? Da, da, da. All, all, A, B, and C. Ah, oh, have you got me? You got me. It was all of them. Give yourself a point. It was a trick question. All of that contributes. Yeah, just general things that might seem a bit everyday, mundane, generally contributing to a stigmatizing environment. And yet, moving on, what percent of people would be willing to speak to a family member about their mental health? 30, 42% or 53? How many people willing to speak to their family or friend about mental health? 30% full. How many willing to speak to their family or their friends? Do, 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 do. Got all different. Uh, oh, all different, all different votes here. The answer for that one is 42%. So 42, so that's less than half. Um, only 42% of people willing to speak to their family member or their friend about their mental health. Really taboo subject day. And then final ones are true or false, you get 50% chance of getting it right. One of the key reasons people give for not talking about their mental health is the stigma around it. True or false? True and a sad face. We've got quite a lot of trues. Yeah. I might, I did let that one slip earlier as well. True. Give yourself a point if you got it, if you if you voted for true. So that's the end of our quiz. Um hopefully we'll be educational. Um did anyone get six out of six? Tony is always wanting to know who won. And get six out of six. Oh, Bridget. Well, Bridget, of course. Um, any on six out of six. <laughs> Bridget. And we get five out of six. Oh, we've got quite a few fives. Fives. Brilliant. And every like so you you're joint winners, and everyone else is just joint winners for being here. Um, that's the way we run quizzes. Well done. Thank you so much. So hopefully you learned something. And if you're running one of your own quizzes, feel free to use our questions. Educate, educate people about what we care about. Um, so yeah, it can be really hard for people, as you've seen from that, that if people are opening up about their mental health and they want to take those steps, that stigma and discrimination still exists. And people, if they are spoken to about mental health, how do I say, what do I say? How do, what's the right thing? How do I respond? Am I, am I now, like, do I need to help them? People just don't know how, how to deal with that. Um, and that, that can be a barrier if you don't want to get help, if you don't get support, you, just opening up. And yet, even in the environments where they do open up, well, as we've seen, people don't always get the help that they need. So we need to encourage people to then get through that stigma in the environments, in themselves, and keep asking until they get help. So, da -da 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 -da. I think my next Buddha, two seconds. Here we go. So here, I'm just looking, I've got my sheets in the wrong order. And then also, I think it's really important to highlight if you've heard the word intersectionality, um, it describes someone who, who defines their protected characteristic under the Quality Act. So perhaps you have mental health issues and you identify as being gay, or uh, you have mental health issues and you might identify. You, DME, black and minority ethnic, you might come you might be transgender, loads of different issues. And those, that intersectionality can create multiple, multiple barriers for people opening and seeking help. There's loads of statistics around sexual orientation and the impact that has on how someone feels about themselves around mental health and the issues that can have in seeking help. And for us, and if you are wondering, like, how would I have that, how would I have that conversation and not even, and not knowing, that's one of the reasons so I thought I'm going to open up to the chat again, pop in the little chat box. What do you think are the key ingredients to talking about mental health, having a conversation? 
what do you think are the key ingredients? Would it be a degree that you, do you need a degree in talking about mental health? What do you think would be a good, what makes a good conversation? Somebody saying listening. Lots of listening. Yeah. And I'm going to have a little look through this. Scrolling, scrolling. Listening without judgment. Definitely. Honesty. Compassion. Trusting. Safety. No assumptions. Caring. Oh, I like Jan said, really listening, not just, all oh, right, okay. Empathy. Now I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, right, there's loads of online courses right now. Do I, like, it's probably going to cost a lot of money to get those skills right because nobody can do it. Oh, no, wait. If you look at that, they're all free of charge, right? We need to just take time. Listen. How are you? Ask again. How are you really? Take time. We, we, we don't, we see, you don't ask to be an expert. You can know where, you can use our website. There's places where we get urgent help. We're not a service provider, but you can encourage them and listen and really help them open up. Um, and we have, I, I'm not sure, Tony, did I include this in the slides? Yeah, I think I did. Some top tips for creating those conversations, um, which you'll have when I share the slides afterwards. That we have a time to talk day every year. And these are just some things to remember when you're having those conversations. Because during that time to talk day, we share tips about having conversations about mental health. Um, um, I'm not going to pretend that I added anything that, that you lot didn't come up with. Asking questions, someone said open questions, empathy, you're not judging them, space, patiently. And the next one, Tony, I think. One more little do da. See, it's okay to say, hey, hey, that's. I'm not quite sure how to help you, but I want to. Give me a bit of time to think about that. Or language, how does it feel when someone turns around and says to you, but that's, you don't have to feel like that, or lecturing that person about how they should feel. And also we'd say, be kind to yourself. Always, um, yeah, put on your own up to your mask before you help other people. And it does look like you, you lot are definitely, um, definitely knowing how to take care of yourself so ensuring that ensuring that happens so what is mental health stigma and discrimination if we do move on there's a there's a nice slide big question what is mental health stigma and discrimination what is it where does it come from so we've got a wee definition uh, of stigma and discrimination now i'm just going to pop you up i'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you for definitions but here's our definitions of mental health stigma and discrimination that's so that's how to create a conversation. Never can see that slide too many times. Um, stigma and discrimination. So stigma is a negative attitudes or assumptions which a person can hold about themselves. So that's, we know someone might be struggling with their mental health and we stigmatize that. And discrimination, that's the unfair and unjust treatment of that person. So because of that, that because of that mental health problem or issue or struggles, they're treated differently and they're treated unfairly. Now, I'm wondering, where do you think stigma comes from? I'd like to put in the chat, where do you think it comes from? How do we, how do we get stigma? Mm. Fear. Fear of what, Wendy? Do you think fear of difference? Mm. Loads of great answers in here. Media, others here. Now, unknowing, not knowing difference. Yeah, a lot we, you may have heard of unconscious bias is a massive part. We don't know what to say, how to act, and oh, um, and how that's created. Yeah, throughout history, how that history has been written. What do we say about people with mental health issues? What do we know about mental health issues? And I think that's important. Like it may not be, it may not be intentional. There could be unintentioned, but it's still stigma. So that you, you've nailed it. Um, 
So different types of stigma, and I don't know if you, if you saw the slides, I think I go over, there's different, um, if we know about the different types of stigma, then it makes it help, more helpful to challenge that. Now, I think we had earlier on um, a really good example um, from Susan about that self-stigma. You internalise what's going on in society, what's said about you, what's said about who you are and what you're worth. A lot of you touched on public stigma, the general public. Now, the cool thing is, though, even though, you know, public stigma isn't great, well, it's, it's not good, we try and stop it, but how do we stop it? Everything in society, if it's the media, if it's society, if it's betrayal, if there's knowledge, we can change that. We can turn that narrative. Is that what's influencing our decisions and our, and our knowledge? We can change that. Association is when people stigmatise. People who are associated with that and structural stigma. That's rules, policies and practices restrict the rights and opportunities of those. There's some different kinds of stigmas and then you'll I have that to draw attention to when, when I share the slides later. And just now I want to share some stuff that we do at CME um, as well. Um, actually, I'm going to start, if you want to just show the next slide for me please. I'll, I'll talk about just our little approach about um, our approach to tackling this. Now this is just background to see me. We've got a few ways are definitely proven to challenge stigma and this is our approach. We have social contact, which is our social movement. It's people with lived experience, talking to people who maybe haven't had that experiences and challenging that perception. How often do you see someone and yeah, like, like Susan said, it didn't look like they had depression, but make sure that they had it. We have campaigns, we have e-learning. Um, so creating that social contact. And in this opportunity, when we are online now, we're doing that to launch some more social contact events. And today's our first stigma summer sessions and we're hoping to get more this online opportunity how we grow this movement is getting more interactions through poetry through art with people with experience to, get to challenge stigma people that might not have engaged before we've got protests which doesn't have to be about being out of placards it can be about influencing people changing minds challenging education we mentioned yeah education is a massive part lack of education experience and stigma and legal constraints. Equality law, human rights, there can be lots of ways that policies and practices restrict that. So we mentioned as one of those a social contact and a social movement and this is then I'm going to call on Bridget. Um, if you show my next slide for me Tony, we're going to get a little photo of Bridget in action to tackle stigma. There she is. In her <laughs> um, and we've got some other, some other activities there from our volunteers. Because we have our volunteers in lived experience who care passionately about this and do different things in different communities and settings. Um, so Bridget, I'd like to hand over to you to give us a little example and overview of the things that you get up to, some, just some of the things that you get up to in your community. Well, I've done, oh God, I think about five walker miles. Um, two in Gala Shields and three in Peebles. So tell what's a walk a mile? Don't you a walk a mile is when we get people together and we have two or three speakers, one of which is usually Susan, and um, I occasionally say something if I'm feeling brave, um, but just to give people an idea of actually how easy it is to speak about mental health because people that haven't been involved with groups like See Me, they still seem to think it's this, you know, mysterious thing that shouldn't really be talked about and they don't know the words to use. Um, so yeah, we, we do a couple of talks just to get people to see that they can do it. And then you get paired up um, by using a different colored t-shirt and preferably with someone you don't know because generally people find it easier to talk about these things with people they don't know. Um, and then we literally walk a mile um, with that person hopefully talking about their mental health. Um, people don't always take advantage of that, but that is the purpose of it. Um, the, the other thing that I do is books are my big thing. I really love just losing myself in a book. And so I hold events in bookshops called Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover. And again, we have people talking about their experiences with books. 
and how books have offered an escape or a comfort or um, instructions on how to deal with poor mental health. Um, and then an opportunity just to browse around the shop and maybe get some ideas. And again, most importantly, have conversation with other like-minded people. So that those are the main things that I've done. But I have also set up a support group and there's a couple of people here today. Thank you for coming. Who are here. And it's it's just amazing to see how if you give people a space where they feel safe to talk about what's going on in their life, it can contribute so much to their own recovery. Thank you so much, Bridget. Um, and that's just yeah, a couple examples. I'm sure you tie that into everything you do. You're, you're, you're an advocate everywhere you go, and you shared some wonderful poetry recently with us as well um, through writing about that. And Susan, is there anything you want to add to that? There's some stuff you've done as well. Um, yeah, I've been and I've helped with um, Bridget. The book, the Judge of Book one's brilliant because we've been in some lovely bookshops um, the past few times. Um, I have helped with the walk a mile and things like that, which is good. Um, and I've done with the one that the chaps that set it up. We got to walk around Murrayfield behind Sir Chris Hoy, which was just very nice. Um, and yeah, I do a lot of talking. I've done media stuff um, in the press and the local radio, which was a bit scary driving when you hear your voice come out. Um, but yeah, I get involved in things like that, online share, sharing the steamy stuff is just as important because it might reach somebody as well. But um, yeah, something I don't have a problem with, I do a, a lot of talking and things like that in various groups and encourage my work to get involved. And we now have a like, healthy living group where uh, mental health is on the agenda every meeting that we have now, which is a huge step forward for my work and it's good. So that's Thank you. Susan. See, I think that's just amazing how, like, you know what I mean, just things that you're a part of, every, every, like, your workplace, you can introduce it there because you care about it. It just takes one person to care about that. Or, like, you say, on Facebook, sharing something and saying, hey, I'm doing this thing. Um, that happens to me. We were doing a poetry event, which Bridget did um, some wonderful poetry. And some of my friends who hadn't really engaged, they kind of knew mental health was my thing. Funnily enough, I'm the person that people tend to reach out to. But they had time off and was furloughed. And um, I was like, we're doing this poetry thing. I would never normally turn up to it, but she was out her daily walk and was like, I just tuned in and listened to that poetry. That was amazing. And just sharing it with people that you don't even think might, might care, but they get taught something. They learn something from the people. Um, and Jamie, you've done some media stuff. I don't know if you want to chat about that just now. Yeah, so I've done a couple of um, newspaper articles and a radio interview as well. That was on BBC Radio Scotland. That was a great one. Um, and I was the same, just like sharing anything when it comes across and also just talking to people in work whenever I get the chance. Yeah, just genuinely being an ambassador, being that person that's like, hey, that's okay. But yeah, we can talk about that. Just the normalizing of it, right? Thank you so much, team. And I see Tony shared some stuff to find out some more things. Um, yeah, so th there's loads of different stuff that we get up to. Um, that's just a wee flavor of it. Um, we were social movement, we've got that, we've got champion-led activity, and we've also got our intersectional partners, we work deaf communities, BME, and also LGBT, and we work with that in specific projects. Um, our volunteers help shape resources, um, do all different speaking events, um, and we have different settings where it's key that we do influence, because the research shows this is where stigma and discrimination is, is key um, that we need to target. So that's in health and social care settings, in education, in various other places. Education, social movement, and in the media. Work, oh, workplaces, workplaces and communities. There's the strands that we do, so let's start again now. Right? So we have workplaces, health and social care, education, and communities. Can I get some marks? Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I know, I know where, where I work. <laughs> um, so there are these key settings that we, we challenge stigma and discrimination in, and we get volunteers to be a part of because we know that is where influencing can happen. But like we say, there's loads of campaigns that you run that you can get access to, and we'll share these after today. We've got Mental Health Awareness Week, which has loads of activity around that. 
I'm seeing we've got the anti-stigma summer sessions, which I'm going to give you a bit more information about later, but today's the launch day. Um, so we'll be encouraging you all to be running your online events. Um, we've got Pass the Badge, Walk a Mile, Feels FM, there's loads of stuff, Scottish Mental Health Arts and Film Festival, we share links to that. There's so much stuff you can be getting involved in already. So to say you've not got an idea and you don't know how to help, we're going to make sure you have resources that mean you don't have that excuse anymore. So yeah, using that, that evidence base from protest, education, changing the legal stuff, using the social contact based model, we have that evidence base that that's the way we change society change the world. And that's why we're asking you to join us. So now we're going to break out into little breakout rooms and you've got 15 minutes of discussion. Um, and Tony, using the powers that be, not yet, recently, she is going to divide you out. And we're all going to like, go to our little breakout rooms. At least you can have to like wander around the building being like, where's the woman suite? So you're going to get directed there straight away. Um, and you're going to ask you a question to discuss. So you've heard a bit a lot from me. You've heard from our volunteers. You've seen some stuff. You're doing some amazing stuff on yourselves. What are you doing already or what could you do in your community? Whatever part of community you're a part of, whether education, work, to help you challenge, pick up mental health stigma and discrimination. So what could you do or what are you doing? In your groups, we're going to give you 10 minutes to discuss that. Um, have a chat, share ideas, and then we'll get back together. Now remember, we're going to get share our ideas when we come back. We want to know what you've been chatting about. So one person ready to feed back to the group. We won't have any awkward silences then. So one person ready to say, hey, this is what we chatted about, capturing some key points. So have fun in your little groups, and I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. Tony, press the button. Duck. I love it. <laughs> that well, is big. You're in on a walk the conversation. Though, every two seconds, and you're like, I don't. Is it, is it necessary? I'm sorry. Enjoy it, Tony. <laughs> but now, now you do realise I'll be getting you binoculars. Like it's the thing people latch onto. There's so many bird watching gifts you can get people. Oh my goodness! I've just spent so much money on a new pair of binoculars. I absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many but you'll be getting bird tables from people it's like it's the thing that that <laughs> exactly like you just latch on to it you mentioned one time you did it and then everyone just buys bird watching. we're just chatting about bird watching guys everyone thanks for coming back and um, you muted me tony i did um <laughs> i have the power to unmute um so I hope you enjoyed your little breakout room chats um, and they were useful. And we were chatting a bit about what I'd been going on about, what Susan and Bridget and Gemma, we'd all been chatting about. What are we already doing and what are we going to be doing? So I'm going to come, if I could maybe start with um, who's in my group. 
Would you mind sharing some stuff we were chatting about? What were your key points? Hopefully you all remembered someone to give key points. Um, who was it? Unmute yourself. Oh, there you are. Was that me? You jumped in. Yeah, it was you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no worries. Um, a couple of the main points I think that we were discussing, um, because Emma raised that she works with students. So it was like encouraging people to learn and to want to learn about mental health and mental health stigma and discrimination. Um, and then, you know, having them share it with other people. So I don't know whether that would be like an ambassador or something, but, you know, just to try and like reach a wider audience. So not people that we already have in our circles that they were already speak about mental health with, but reaching like other people. And that's how we're going to spread the awareness and hopefully normalize it. And I think the one of the other points that we were talking about was um yeah just having like easier access engagement so continuing you know lynn you were talking a lot about how we're online and it's really easy for a lot of people to access not everyone i know but um just continuing that after this um just to try and yeah again make it as easy as possible for people to learn and share their learning um, so that's a couple of things that we took away that we're gonna keep doing definitely or do more of <laughs> Amazing. That is like, and I, I think there's some stuff we were chatting about how we have some targeted resources. I was saying, I forgot to mention that we have a What's on Your Mind resource. So if you are based working with young people, you've got tailored resources, or we talked to a workplace, you've got tailored resources. So picking that up, we've done, we've done it, we made it easy for you. Just picking that up and doing it in, as part of what you already are a part of. And how about someone else volunteer for me? Is a breakout room two? Who was, who was in breakout room two for spokesperson? Bridget. Hi. Yeah, we, hi, we had an amazing chat. I mean, I was just listening, but the three other people in my room, they all have amazing things going on at their work. Um, Wendy had written a blog and about her mental health and that had gone out to 500 people in her workplace. And after that, there's just been so many people picking up on any sort of mental health activity that's going on. Uh, but what I was really interested in, and she maybe would be better at explaining this than me, I wasn't aware that Scottish government had said that there should be um, a confidential contact set up at work. I don't know if that's something everyone knows about. Um, but anyway, so she, of course, being her good self, she is a confidential contact. Um, sorry, what was the next thing? They have weekly, weekly sessions, getting together about their mental health. And Gemma was saying that they've set up what they call a fun club. And I thought that was really interesting to call it fun club rather than you know mental health or how depressed are you today you know it it, it might reach um a wider audience by just putting it out there something a bit bit more than just mental health and um, maria was saying that they have four social events a year uh, including walk miles and so i was asking her how they start the conversation and what they do is they write they have post-it notes and they write a word that they associate and stick it up on the wall and obviously not all words that people come up with are necessarily politically correct and i think it's really great that they people feel safe to do that and then you can actually examine it and talk about it and maybe explain to people why that word is inappropriate and, and that way, trying to get rid of some of the stigma and discrimination. That's, that, yeah, I, I, thank you so much, Bridget. That's so relevant and Wendy for, for that information. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone's seen the American office, the bit where they do the political correctness training and they stick the post-its on their heads and they all have to describe them. I used to work as an equality, diversity, and inclusion officer and deliver inclusive language training. Um, and yeah, we do, do, we do an example where we put down like all the words that you aren't meant to say and you have to like order them and, and, and it just opens up that safe space where you're like I'm not going to lecture you let's just have a laugh and see where does that come from and why why would we choose not to do that you know um but again it's creating that safe space 
Thank you. And um, room three. I don't have any rooms there are. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, that was. You have to unmute yourself, Yana, if he's back. Yes. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so um, we had a lovely conversation with John, Susan, and Gillian. So um, yeah, we we're talking about what we're already doing, and we just said that we're all trying to just educate ourselves and spreading the world and starting the conversation about mental health and. Um, I think many of us work with young people or, or people in general. So we were talking about how we're promoting the services that are available and encouraging people to talk about the problems and assuring them that it's okay to, to talk about mental health. And we were also talking a lot about language and proper use of language around mental health. And yeah, just maybe there is this sort of insecurity about how to use language around mental health and maybe how we can challenge people politely if we notice that they, something's not right how we can maybe challenge people mm -hmm. so that's something we said we can maybe work on or try to work on i'm interested did you, how, did, how did you did you say like that's something which comes up a lot with language that what what do you think are the barriers to raising that I think oh, in my case, I, I always feel that, well, first of all, when somebody says something like that, I'm shocked, so I'm frozen, so I, I, my reaction usually comes quite late, <laughs> so it's probably already too late to react to that, but I just, I just don't feel confident, maybe, and I don't want to be impolite, so often I'm, I'm just kind of say nothing, and if it's something really bad, of course, then I say, well, sorry, but this is not right. And but usually, no, I think that it, it's mm. so right. Like a lot of people do feel afraid, and then later on, you can beat yourself up and be like, "Oh, I wish I'd said something," and you repeat that conversation. Mm. But I think, like you're saying, it, it depends on the relationship with the person. You might it might be someone that you're closer to, or you're not as close to. It can depend or what hat on or what what the conversation is. But I think that is really important that people are thinking about it, um, or setting by example. If we keep saying things, then people will learn. Hmm. Well, thank you, I interrupted you. Did you have other points for the group? Oh, well, that's all right. Um, I think then we were talking about the yeah, conversation about around mental health and spreading the word. So we were um, talking about maybe having this conversation in informal setting help. So, so it doesn't have to be a very you know, serious conversation, but it can be something like, um, you know, selling cake or something like that. Just when people don't feel under pressure. And then I think lastly, we were talking about responsibility and fear. So we were thinking maybe sometimes people feel like when somebody discloses to you, you might have responsibility for that person. And so people don't want to get involved or maybe they fear that they might make things worse or say something inappropriate that might make even more damage and mm -hmm. um, so I think just maybe encouraging people that it doesn't have to be anything else just to listen and be caring and willing to help so yeah I, I hope that I wonderful thank you <laughs> no some lovely stuff in there thank you um, and we did we have a fourth breakout room uh, yeah there was four of us yeah oh thank you yeah but um, oh, you're in breakout room three no problem was there a fourth one there was five, we're on number four, right? What's number four got to say? Number four, does anyone remember? Or anyone who's not on, who's, who's, a wee, who's going to share some stuff? I, I can't really remember what room I was in. Uh, but is, is, is anyone said from your group yet? Has anyone spoken yet? Uh, no. Right, I, well, you're it, you're it. Am, you're I, am I it? Right, I'm four or five, mm. so. If, we, if, really had a, <laughs> if I don't say it, I'll never say it again. Um, no, it was just, we had a lovely chat as well, and I think we were just talking about, you know, being able to get these connections with people that we've never met before about, you know, being on the computer. Um, and I was talking <clears throat> quite a lot about the, the Walk a Mile, which uh, created quite a bit of interest with the ladies as well. Uh, so that's a trip for another day, I think, when all the lockdown's done.
But um, we were sort of speaking about, um, you know, generally young young people as well in that sort of age group, you know, the teenagers, mm. quite difficult, or younger ones. And, you know, about all the, you know, the way the lockdown is, it would not touch people. You can't uh, really, you know, be that close to people just now. And a lot of people really thrive on that kind of um, connection. So that's quite a challenge. But I was sort of saying about the... Walk a mile when we done last year was really super because another lady mm -hmm. comes on board and I heard somebody mention about cakes. She does like the best cake shop and that, you know, obviously opens up a lot of conversations and there was free t-shirts of the day we see me. So my job is kind of about getting sort of young gangs, you know, and saying, oh, come and get your bands on or come and get the free pens, you know, freebies work great. So a wee bit of bribery production in there, but no harmful stuff. Um, you know, and there was quite a great turnout with the youth, uh, the community peoples last year, there's the LGBT group, and um, there was a load of them come along, and it was very mm. vibrant, it was really, really brilliant. So, um, we were just sort of talking about things like that, you know, I think it's quite hard in my head to imagine, just, I want to just dive right into everything now, mm. and just help everybody, but I think it's um, just keeping these connections going, and I'd certainly be happy to be involved in whatever. I'm very passionate about recovery and I just will do whatever it takes. And to keep myself, we're talking about keeping myself safe as well. Uh, you know, yeah, definitely. Um, and I never take anything on that I'm not ready to take on because I know what my own head's like. Um, mm. you know, I'll help if I can and if I'm not able, I'll pass it on to a power that's kind of higher than myself. And that's okay to do that. I'm not here to save the world. Of course it is. Lovely ladies with a lovely conversation. Um, and I'd love to meet, meet them in the future. Oh, great. Thanks so much. Um, yep. I think for me, like, I mean, you're talking about post op thing for us, mm -hmm. definitely, is that we were saying about this online movement, like, hopefully you're all part of our online movement now. And there are some things, as things are, are raising, um, easing, as they say, there are things that we can do, but we're still hoping to connect up online. And I know just for our volunteers, we have someone based up in the islands. And he's been able to connect up with everyone that he's never met before because he's, he's never been able to get him down. So there's been so many ways. So I'd really encourage you, what can we do just now? I know. I'll tell you about what we're doing just now. Um, so we are doing um, something called the Anti-Stigma Summer Sessions. So that's going to be a series of online events launching um, this week. And we're going to have this workshop. We're going to be running more workshops. We've got some ideas for them. There's nothing, like, there's nothing put out yet. We're still firming up details. We're going to be working with our volunteers for some more. It was so so popular last time. Um, we've got an amazing poet and writer signed up to do another Q and A about his work around his mental health and why he shares his story. Um, we're going to have partners doing things. So please do come along and support that and share. Like I think it's come out so clearly that sharing that with people that wouldn't otherwise come along to that that's amazing um, and really powerful. But also, we're going to be creating a little pack so you can run your own events. So you're thinking, mm, I think I might run a little online conversation. Or I can might run a little, a little, I don't know, a, a socially distanced walk a mile. Um, if there's something that you want to do, then the wee pack template. If you let us know, we can provide little event templates. We can give you a little banner for your headline for your Facebook event. We can do that and we can promote it. And we can add it to our website. So we'll be adding all that information and sending that out to you. And before I do a mindful of time, don't worry, I won't keep you. Um, we're wrapping up. I'm really interested in what, what are you going to do differently after today? So we're chatting there about what we do and what we are going to do. In our comments box, has this event inspired you to do something differently or change something or take action today? So pop down in our chat. What is it you're going to do differently? And we'd love to hear from you if you're going to change that. Um, and also in true true online workshop style, we're going to be posting a little survey out to you as well. And on, on the email, um, this is my first online session. Thank you for being so kind to me and not heckling me. Um, I know, you could have just unmuted and gone, it's all gone wild. Um, thank you for bearing with me. Um, and yeah, let us know how you find it. So we can improve when we do all these other workshops. You can be like, oh, that Lynn, she needs to stop wearing shirts with bees on it. That would make my event much better. Um, so before we close, I just want to give the floor back over to Susan and to Bridget, if there's any final things that you want to add. Yeah, there we go. Right, so I'm just going to kind of finish how I started my talk and show you a little thing. 
And this is what I've learned actually through my progress as being a CME volunteer and trying to stand up against stigma. That actually I am worthwhile. I'm not useless and I can and I will succeed. And finally, being me is enough. And if it's not enough for other people, it's their problem, it's no longer mine. I'm me and that's good enough. So one thing I'm going to show you, Tony, I think it was Tony Erling kind of said, I do have a love of stationery apart from rugby. And this is a book that was given to me. I hope you can read it. It's got Flossom. I embrace my I embrace my flaws and I know that I'm awesome regardless. So that's me. I'm Flossom. And I wouldn't want to be perfect. Who does he want a bit of flaw? Um, so yeah, that's me. And I hope you've enjoyed today's meeting. So thank you. Thank you so much. As always, you, you're blossom, girl. Um, Bridget, anything from you? No, I, I see you're on mute. You're on mute, Bridget. But I'm... There we go. Yeah, just Fiona Wynn had shown some interest in the um, the bookshop. I would love to collaborate with you if you want to drop me a message. Amazing, we're all connecting up. Check this. Hey, Lynn, can I just say, Fiona, um, if you've we've got a couple of minutes, I think you'd said in the chat you wanted to quickly share something. Is that okay, Lynn? Of course it is. Go on, Fiona. <laughs> it was only the, the points from group five, and I wanted to really, we, we had oh. three main points, but just one of them dead quickly, which I thought was a great idea. Um, so um, Fiona had uh, said that Costa Coffee do tables with cards saying, I'm up for a chat, so you take your coffee to the table. Is there any way that maybe that could be translated into a park setting? So you get a mobile coffee van, send it out Ooh. on community Facebook, and there's picnic blankets that say, I'm up for a chat, or no, leave me alone, I want to sit here and read my book. But, you know, trying to replicate that kind of, come and talk to me, or leave me alone thing. And, and there was, well, yeah. I think that was the key one I really wanted to get across because I thought it was a fantastic idea yeah. that Fiona had I, raised. I, I tried to forget about Group 5, I'm not going to lie. I tried to <laughs> um, was there anything else that you wanted to share? Oh, what, from Group 5? Yeah. Oh, um, simply Another that... Another uh, points. <laughs> so, um, we did recognise the fact that because of COVID, people are talking to people more and it would be great to find a way to keep... So that's what's happening now. Let's find yeah. a way to keep that going um, and particularly telling real people's stories. So hearing from um, Susan and Bridget today is just fabulous. You know, it's a real person's story now. Um, and Fiona, who's a therapist, was talking about maybe writing a blog, therapy in the time of, uh, of lockdown and how that could be quite, you know, uh, mm. different. So those are the three main oh, ones. Oh, thank you, Fiona, and thank you for not letting me get away with that. And I can confirm that Susan and Bridget are real people. I have met them. Um, they're real life humans, but it's so true. The power of social contact. Thank you, everyone, for that. Um, so, yeah, let's keep this going, right? Let's keep this going. Let's keep turning up to stuff. I'm going to recognise all your faces. Let's be friends, she asked. Um, so what we're going to do is follow on with an email. What I'll do, if there's anyone that you've met, you've good conversations with, Remember their name right now, and I'll get permission for you guys to exchange details. You guys can be in touch. So just remember who your person is, who was interesting. I have all your emails. Um, and in that, we'll give information to sign up to our newsletters, a new podcast out today. And also just on a small, small humble one, ask someone if they're okay today. Um, remember. And then if they, they say they're all right and you're not too sure, ask again. Um, and take care of yourself. So thank you so much for joining our movement. You're now officially part of part of our social movement for change. And um, let's go, let's go change the world, okay? Thanks so much. I'll speak to you all soon. Bye 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 bye. Thank you. Bye. Brilliant. <laughs> bye bye. Catch you later. Bye.